Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of What CD Is Rob Listening To? And now, we go to the last new Rush album. Anything released after that, after this, or at any other point coming up, is just archival. This was the last new release from Rush, from the uh, Toronto stop of their uh, R40 tour, their farewell tour. Although it wasn't billed as that at the time, we all knew. We all knew when we were going to see them on this tour that that would be the end. I caught them in Lincoln, uh, the second stop on the tour. Uh, for the first time ever, they played the song How It Is. And um, I gained a whole new uh, appreciation for that song after hearing it live. I liked it uh, a lot, actually, from the Vapor Trails album. But it wasn't until uh, I heard it live that it just kind of elevated that song into a whole new uh, amazing uh level anyway uh if you don't know nothing about this tour uh what they did was they started with the clockwork angel angels album and they played backwards all the way up until well frankly a snippet of a song that was uh didn't even make the debut album uh a song called garden road and it was just a small part but uh it was still cool to hear uh this is one of my favorite live rush albums i don't know if it's number one it's uh it's tied sort of with different stages i guess um but i i love this one um there are some gripes uh, a lot of the 80s stuff is skipped but i mean since the clockwork angels tour had so much 80s stuff i guess it makes sense uh so really all you get from uh the keyboard years is uh subdivisions losing it in between the wheels you don't get anything from um power windows or hold your fire hold your fire or even Presto, which is also sad because, I mean, what a great album Presto uh, is uh, and to uh, be skipped over was well, kind of sad. But, uh, you know, you, they can only play so much. And at this point, they were all in their 60s. So I guess it makes sense. But fantastic stuff here. The highlight for me is uh, the Prelude to Hemispheres. I mean, that is just really cool. And seeing that live, because um, it was the only time I'd ever seen them live when they played that song. Other than, you know, the the small snippet in the R30 overture. So it was cool to hear that entire uh, prelude. In fact, it's one of my concert highlights of my life. Uh, other cool stuff was, of course, they went back to uh, Caressa Still and Fly By Night for uh, Lakeside Park and Anthem, which was awesome. And uh, What You're Doing, uh, a, a song that I hadn't played since mid to late 70s from the first album was really cool. So, I mean, fantastic stuff. Here you also get the first performance of Losing It with Ben Mink on uh, electric violin in fact it was the very first live performance of losing it uh, the only uh song from signals that until then had never been played live so i mean that is really cool and to have ben mink on that is just uh outstanding uh there's also some bonus stuff on here that wasn't played or put in the uh, sequencing i guess uh, first of all losing it uh, again performed with jonathan dinklage who you may know his brother um Peter Dinklage from the uh, Game of Thrones series. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. A little, little name drop there. Uh, you also, uh, bonus tracks, you get one little victory, distant early warning, Red Barchetta, an amazing version of Clockwork Angels and The Wreckers. Clockwork Angels was a fantastic album, and I'm so sad that I missed that tour. It was the only tour between Vapor Trails and R40 that I missed. Still kicking myself in the ass for that. Uh, you also get the camera eye as a bonus. So, I mean, that's cool. And I don't know, I just like the way they played sort of backwards, going from Clockwork Angels all the way to the beginning. And, you know, with each uh, change of album, uh, the stage setup was arranged until at the very end, all you're left with was a couple amps on some stools, which I thought was really cool. Kind of playing a high school dance, as you can tell by the basketball hoop here. So anyway, I guess if uh, Rush had to go out, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that it went out on such an amazing tour. Uh, this was just um, three musicians at... I guess I would call it like peak performance. Uh, Getty's vocals were a little rough in some spots and maybe Alex isn't playing quite as well as he used to, but you could not tell that Neil was um, in his 60s and playing with some foot issues. In fact, you, the band, whole band is just playing phenomenal on this album as well as the entire tour and such an incredible performance. I mean, um, I got to mention how, uh, the main monkey business from Snakes and Arrows great tune uh some really cool animation for roll the bones um you know of course tom sawyer is on every live album so i mean since 81 
Anyways, this was just fantastic. And, and I got to point out one last thing. Uh, presentation being played in 2112 was just such an awesome surprise. Uh, very cool stuff. So anyway, this would be the very last Rush, new Rush album. Anything they release from now on is archival. Yeah, sure. Um, they've released some live stuff that uh, hadn't been released before. But like I said, it's from the archives. They can't come back. I mean, Getty and Alex can come back with another drummer and play together. Um, and I really hope they do. But it, it won't be called Rush. I, I know it won't be called Rush. I'll still go if they tour. I mean, I, I, of course. Um, in fact, there are some slight rumors going and started that uh, there may be something next year for the band's 50th. So fingers crossed and we'll see. But uh, like I said, if Rush were uh, to call it quits, I'm glad they did on such a wonderful, amazing fucking tour. And, uh, you know, good night to one of the greatest bands of all time. And uh, rest in peace to the professor, Mr. Neil Peart on the drum kit. Uh, anyway, until next time, toodles.